Uh, I, I just can't understand why the Prime Minister can't get his line in length here and why the Prime Minister can't see anti-Semitism playing out when it's on the screens, it's in the newspapers, and it's horrifying millions of Australians. Uh, this is conduct that deserves condemnation from the highest office in the country, and the Prime Minister should be out there sending a very clear message uh, that these rallies shouldn't take place. He should be reaching out, speaking to community leaders to stop the rallies from taking place in the first instance. Uh, and it's unbelievable that the National Security Committee hasn't met to talk about our equities in the Middle East, uh, what happens uh, in relation to staff, not just in Israel but in Lebanon, uh, in surrounding areas otherwise, if there's a need for an evacuation, what happens here in terms of the policing effort, the coordination uh, around places where people of Jewish faith are gathering, uh, not just synagogues and schools, but other places as well. Uh, these are simple questions uh, that, that need uh, you know, pretty significant contemplation about the best way to keep Australians safe. And the Prime Minister hasn't yet conven convened uh, a National Security Committee meeting. It is unbelievable. At a time when we've got world leaders who are without any reservation whatsoever lending their support to, uh, to Benjamin Netanyahu, to the people of Israel, uh, our Prime Minister, it seems, hasn't made any phone call uh, and hasn't even convened the National Security Committee. It's a very, very significant issue, uh, and it's not over yet. Uh, the thought of the horrific acts that have taken place uh, I send, a, send a shiver down anyone's spine. Uh, the beheading of babies, the terrorist attacks which have slaughtered women, raped women, there are still people that are being held captive now. And our Prime Minister can't uh, call the Israeli leadership or can't uh, convene a National Security Committee. I, I think it is uh, an absolute outrage and the Prime Minister deserves to be called out on it. Mr Dutton, from yeah. your experience as our Defence Minister, what's your take on how the Americans may respond in these circumstances given their presence in the Mediterranean and the language of Mr Biden in terms of his unequivocal support for Israel? Well, Adam, the answer is that we just don't know, but there are different scenarios that could play out, and that's what I think the National Security Committee should be contemplating at the moment. Uh, the Prime Minister should be taking advice from the Chief of the Defence Force of ASIS, of ASIO, uh, should be looking at the intelligence picture and putting together different scenario planning. Uh, they should have anticipated that there would be significant public disorder activity. I don't know where the Border Force is looking at individuals who were protesting at the Story Bridge, uh, sorry, at the, uh, the Opera House, uh, and, and now it seems uh, other protests planned around the country and other capital cities. Uh, I, I don't know where the Border Force is looking at whether those people are permanent residents, uh, if they're citizens, if they're visa holders. If they're visa holders, the visa should be cancelled immediately, uh, and the Minister should be taking that action right now, uh, calling for people uh, and, you know, to be gassed, uh, or celebrating the death of women and children uh, is just appalling. So all of that needs to be contemplated by the National Security Committee and the Prime Minister doesn't have any coherent reason as to why the committee hasn't been convened. Uh, I think it's a very, very significant issue uh, and he deserves to, to be asked those questions. Would you expect Qantas and Virgin to help the federal government with repatriation? Well, again, this is the sort of issue uh, that, that gets discussed in the National Security Committee. There would be advice from the central agencies uh, and from the, Depart the Department of Transport uh, about discussions um, that would be, as we did during the course of COVID, um, make approaches to the companies, look at the options that are available to us. Uh, do you need to pre-deploy uh, Air Force assets uh, to be in El Minhad or somewhere close by in the region? if we need to quickly uplift people out of Lebanon, for example, uh, or out of Tel Aviv. I mean, these are all questions uh, that you ask reasonably, but they can really only be answered uh, if they've been considered. And the fact that the Prime Minister is now trying to look busy running around the country in the last 36 hours or last 48 hours uh, as we approach the weekend for the voice vote, uh, it, it just... I, I just... I think this is a time when the Prime Minister needs to show leadership. And I think the fact that he's at odds with the Deputy Prime Minister's words and at odds with Mr Shorten's words, uh, I, I think 
you know, it's no wonder that many people within the Jewish community are shaking their head at the Prime Minister right now. You've worked closely with Australia's own intelligence agencies. Are you pretty confident, notwithstanding your criticism of the Prime Minister this time around, that they are prepared for any unrest that may be occurring within uh, I've, 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 sure. I've got no doubt, uh, and I've, some of the agency heads were uh, on the briefing I had uh, yesterday, I've no doubt that, uh, that they will be doing everything possible. But uh, there, there's a gravitas that the Prime Minister brings to a convened meeting of the National Security Committee, and departments might have ideas uh, that, that just don't cut it, and the government can reprioritise uh, the planning and give directions to the secretaries or to uh, the, the heads of uh, ASIO and ACES, etc., uh, to undertake activity much more quickly. Uh, if you've got people who are so minded, so warped, as to be calling for for Jews to be gassed. I mean, that, that's, you know, the obvious historical reference there. Uh, if you've got people of that mind, uh, it's not difficult to contemplate that they might deliver violence themselves on people of Jewish faith. And uh, I, I think, again, the Prime Minister needs to step up and do this planning and give the agencies uh, the direction uh, that they need to conduct their planning. You said the rally plan for Brisbane on Friday. Yeah. Not, not, not if it's going to be a rally about calling for people to be gassed, for people of Jewish faith to be gassed. That doesn't have any place in our country. It should be con condemned absolutely. Uh, and an incitement of violence or that sort of conduct uh, should be met with a very, very heavy hand from uh, the Queensland Police or uh, the Victorian Police or New South Wales. I think the New South Wales Police Commissioner and the New South Wales Police Minister owe an enormous apology. Uh, to people uh, from the Jewish community in New South Wales. I thought it was one of the most appalling acts I've ever seen uh, to turn somebody away who was there to support people uh, of the Jewish community uh, with an Israeli flag at a time when the New South Wales Premier uh, had made a very public statement and, and good on him for doing so uh, in lighting up the Opera House uh, with the Israeli colours. And I think the Premier here uh, needs to step up in a way that uh, the Prime Minister hasn't. Uh, to, to come down heavily and, uh, and not issue permits and not allow uh, these protests to take place uh, where there is an element of incitement and hatred and it doesn't have any place in our community. You've said that Australia should assist Israel if the country requests munitions. Why should Australia be helping one of the most advanced defence forces in the world? Would that drag us into conflict into the Middle East? Well, there were 260 young women and men uh, driven out into the desert and then machine gunned down. Uh, there are now reports of 40 babies uh, being beheaded. Uh, there are reports of women being raped. There are reports of uh, over 150 women, children and men being held hostage. I can't imagine the circumstances that they're in right now. Uh, people have been slaughtered in their homes, including a Holocaust survivor. Australian citizens, uh, obviously, uh, have been affected by this and their families as well. Uh, and that's a time when Australia stands up and supports like-minded countries to provide them with support and to send a very clear and united message to those terrorists uh, that their conduct is not acceptable and that we will push back and fight against it. And the conduct uh, that you're seeing from Hamas now uh, is completely and utterly from the ISIS playbook. And we've been in a conflict uh, alongside our partners, including the United States, our Five Eyes partners, our allies otherwise, pushing back against terrorism. And the West needs to do that. And Australia stands up for her values, and we shouldn't be afraid to step back from that.